Hello and welcome to part 3 of Hope, the wonderful story I found on DeviantArt. If you've happened to come on this one without seeing the first or second episodes, I implore you to do so or it will make even less sense. So let's do this. We ran in the streets, hearing the robo-police looking for us with their radars. Colonel dragged me in an open manhole and he gave me a gas mask. There is no oxygen here, but there isn't electricity too, so our chips won't be found. He wore his gas mask and then we walked into the sewers. There are lots of tunnels, he said. You'll be safe here, but the oxygen of the mask won't last forever, so you need to rob it like I do. Wait, are you saying that I'm a useless now? Sarah, if you go up there... They'll send you to Earth or kill you. Here you'll be safe long enough as long as I can plan something for hide you. Colonel, I killed Shane. He tried to rape you. You were just defending yourself. But he's one of the cousins of the mayor. They won't forget you. Colonel, I didn't even greet my parents. I will send them a message. For now, stay here. Where are you going? I'm going to see if those fuckass are still there and to catch some oxygen for your mask. Colonel. Yes? Thanks. He smiled to me, and then he disappeared in a tunnel. I sat on the ground, starting to cry. I asked myself what I would do after, if I was safe now. Three hours passed. After, I heard a noise from a tunnel. Colonel, are you there? I asked in the dark. But then, one of the glowing eyes of the robo-police came out of the obscurity, with lots of other ones. Hay started to say, Surrender, surrender, surrender. surrender. And then they chained me. The robo-police brought me out from the sewers to the major palace. I was scared and lots of civilians were watching me disgusted by my faults. We entered in a large room where there was only the mayor and they left me alone with him and two robots of the security. He was fat, smelly, with green eyes and purple hair and he wore a robe night colored as the blood. Very well, Miss Santos. Very well, he started. Major, I was just... He tried to rape me. Oh, please, don't lie to me, he smiled. I know what you were doing with your little friend. You were probably taking your own revenge on Hope killing my dear cousin. No, that is complete wrong. What am I going to do with you now? You seem to be a good girl after all, but well, you have bad friends. You hid in yourself and my cousin's death must be punished. Major, please, don't send me on Earth. I will do everything you want. Everything? Yeah. Then tell me where you little friend live. He's a real criminal in the end. He really must be punished. I thought about my family, about my friends, about the Earth and about Shane. Then I decided to not betray Conal. I can't, I said quietly. Then you decide your destiny, he called the two robots. Number one, prepare the ship. Number two, prepare her. The two robots grabbed me and brought me in a strange grey room. Number one disappeared by a door made of plastic strips, while number two gave me a strange clock. Send a last last message message to your your family, family. he said. You have have two two minutes. minutes. I wrote my mother's number of chip on the clock, then I typed, Sorry, Mom. I really love you. Bye-bye. After, the robot took very rudely that thing from my hands. He cut my hair. He made me dress with an orange work suit and a gas mask. He took away the chip from my shoulder, and then... I is ready for the journey. The ship was a little grey, shining egg made in metal. The two robots put at me, in a rudely way, inside the ship. Inside, I was in a fetal position because it wasn't large enough for lay completely. The door closed me and the dark surrounded me. A technical voice said, Ten. Nine. Nine. Then I prepared myself for the launch. After ten seconds, it started off. I heard the motor starting, the ship taking fly, the immense atmosphere surrounding me. I understood that I was in space when the gravity went away. I started to fly inside the egg, hearing only the motors and breathing by the gas mask. There was cold in there. I started to tremble, and I hugged my shoulders trying to warm up myself. I fell to sleep too. I dreamed my mother screaming horrible things in my face and Conal hanged in the square. After three hours, I started to ear the terrestrial atmosphere, and the noise woke me up. Question of seconds, and the ship felt on the ground. I swear that I could hear the ground hitting my neck and back with a strong pain. I screamed, and I tried to exit from the egg. After a while, a guy opened the egg. He wore a police uniform had short white hair, 
blue eyes and was old. Are you okay, sweetie? He asked me, with a lamp in his hand. I, uh, feel a bit broke. It's normal. You just passed through the terrestrial atmosphere. He smiled. Nothing broke, right? No. I stand up and I looked around me. There was other 30 eggs with people inside them and police everywhere to help them. With the help of the policeman, I exited from the egg and I finally felt the ground under my boots. There was sand. No, the green soft grass. The sand. My name is Michael, the policeman said. What's yours? Sarah. My daughter name is Sarah. Oh, is she on Hope? No. She's right there. He pointed a girl who was helping a big boy to exit from the egg. Sarah, you need to know a few things before you entry in the jail zone, okay? Okay. First, the policemen aren't robo-police. We are humans. We understand your problems. So if you desperately need something, just ask, okay? Okay. Even if I need to cry? Lots of prisoners do that every day. Sure you can. Second... You killed a person, so you will be sent to the problematic zone. There are lots of pieces of shit there, so you could need to fight. Can I hit them? Now the earth is kind of a forest. Only the most strong survive because at least we can't watch every one of you in every moment. You can defend yourself. You must defend yourself. Okay. Here you will do some works. Gym every week. One hour in the green zone at day, and shower every three days. Last advice. Beware of the lesbians. They can be crazy sometimes. Okay. So, can we entry? Yes. He brought me inside the jail, holding my hand. His skin was soft, his touch comfortable, and his voice deep and friendly. I wasn't scared anymore, and I understood that there was a lot of people in my same situation, and not only criminals. The jail hall was giant. It was full of people from every nation and of every sex of every age, one behind the other, waiting for the classification. It was a procedure where every prisoner received his pack of thing useful for the jail years. The policeman left me in the group and went to the outside for the new arrivals. After one hour was my turn. The policeman examinated me. Then they gave me a box full of clothes with one book, a lamp, and a bottle of water. After, they made me have a fast shower, and they sent me to my sector of jail. It was horrible. The glass roof made me see the dawn, so far from me and all was black around. In the cells, the prisoners were waking up. Right, the women. Left, the men. I could hear their yawns and their moans. Looking better, there were children too. A policeman was staring in the metal of the hall, giving information, and another one was giving the prisoners their cell number. I went to him and he said, Sarah Santos, number 15834, cell number 303. Where do I have to? Up there. He pointed one of the cells of the second floor. I went to the stairs and I started to climb. The dungeon was cold and dark, and some female prisoners watched me with a welcoming smile. An evil smile or just a sad look. Some of them just ignored me. I walked very fast until I arrived at my cell. It was open, and there were four beds inside. There wasn't anyone in there, and I was a bit scared. Hello? I asked. I started to put my clothes in the wardrobe and to fix my bed, the last on the right. Then I picked up the book, The Lord of the Rings, a fantasy. I put the lantern on the floor. I sat on the bed and I waited till someone came. She was a little kid with black, curly hair and two ponytails. She wore the jail uniform. She had brown eyes and beige skin. Hi, I said with a smile. The kid just smiled too and then she disappeared in the dungeon. I was confused, but happy that one of my cellmates was a kid. After a while, I closed the door and I fell to sleep. I didn't know what would have happened after. So there is chapter three or part three or whatever you want to call it. I have to say, if I was if I was writing a story in Italian, it probably would be it probably would come across in the same way. So this isn't really that bad, you know. Just some funny bits here and there. It's actually kind of interesting now. I'm actually getting engaged. But anyway, what did you think? What's been your favorite part? What if what are some of you the highlights for you? Tell me in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are very much appreciated. Make sure you check out some of my other videos and my other channel media for more crazy content. I'll see you next time. Bye!